Hi, this is Ms. Delosier, and these are your notes on homeostasis, disease, and pathogenesis. So the first thing I want to talk about is homeostasis and disease and what those mean in relationship to one another. Um, homeostasis, you probably remember from ninth grade, but we're going to review it anyway. Homeo um, is from the Greek word homeos, which means like, and stasis is um, from the Greek word for standing or stopping, which kind of means stable in this case. And so homeostasis means stable-like. So like stopped um, is when you put it together. But it's the process of maintaining a normal balance in the body. So it's it's keeping a stable balance within the body. And we're talking about specifically like keeping a stable body temperature, keeping a stable pH in different parts of the body. Uh, keeping a stable oxygenation level throughout the body. So that's homeostasis. So what does that have to do with disease? So uh, what it has to do with disease is that disease occurs when homeostasis is disrupted. So we actually say when you have an homeostatic imbalance, um, that's when disease occurs. Um, and that's going to take us to the last part of these notes, was, which is pathogenesis. Pathogenesis is uh, another word that we need to talk about. Patho, you guys know, means disease. And genesis means origin or development. So this is going to be the origin or the development of the disease. So it, it actually means the development of, of a disease or kind of how a disease happens and then the process of it occurring within the body. Um, so it's the sequence of events from etiology to abnormal anatomy and physiology, to manifestation, and finally to recovery. And so that's a that's a very specific definition, and I just kind of want to break it down. So it's from what causes the disease to the development of um, changes in the anatomy or changes in the function of the body to manifestation. That's when you, you first actually recognize um, that there is an abnormality um, and homeostasis is actually noticeably out of balance. So that's when the patient would actually uh, start to notice symptoms or when a doctor would be able to actually detect signs of a disease. And then finally through to recovery. So let's look at an example. So for the common cold, uh, that would be the etiology would be exposure uh, and inoculation of the cold virus. So if I was exposed to the cold virus, that would be the etiology. Then you would have your incubation time um, so the virus is going to replicate during that time. Then you're going to have your manifestation, and that's when you're actually going to start for the host is going to actually develop symptoms, sore throat, um, itchy eyes, runny nose, you know, normal flu or, flu or cold symptoms. Recovery um, is going to be just a return to your previous state of health. Um, and pathogenesis and disease, the timeline can occur in one of two ways. You can either have an acute which is going to be a sudden onset that's severe and it's a short course, or you can have chronic disease, and that's going to be a long-term or a reoccurring illness. And so when you're talking about this pathogenesis and this whole process of the disease, you need to be thinking, is this an acute onset or a chronic disease? And that's it for these notes. I hope that's helpful. 